Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 is going to take us around the 4th of uh, September. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. We're going to try a couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us into the uh, second half of September, of course. I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say that the first video released today was our 7 a.m. forecast. We also uh, released the USA forecast. Could be a big impact from a hurricane on the Gulf Coast uh, early next week. So check out USA forecast. See what's going on there. Talk about it uh, again in a second for anybody who hasn't watched USA forecast. And uh, also uh, we released the uh, JMA seasonal update uh, for the next three months, which of course covers autumn. 2021 so please uh check out all the videos like share subscribe on video thank you so much everybody uh for doing that hope you're having a lovely uh wednesday right better turn the webcam off and i'll just bring up to date what's going on in the tropics again for anybody who's not watched usa forecast so we've got three areas of interest this one don't think we have to worry too much about that at the moment this one just here will probably become a tropical storm and or hurricane through the weekend and into early next week but it looks like it's going to be generally kept him in the Atlantic. So it might impact island areas. Um, and, and it is one to watch. This is the one that could bring a big impact to the Gulf Coast of the United States. This one just here doesn't look like much at the moment. But the GFS model is forecasting this to uh, go in this sort of direction and develop as it does so. And uh, potentially... Uh, bring a big impact, as I say, to the Gulf Coast, probably somewhere around Texas, um, uh, through the early part of next week. Now, the GFS midnight run took the central pressure with this down to 940 millibars, which would be getting it towards major, uh, you know, a major hurricane category status. So it is definitely one to watch this. It could bring some really bad weather to that Gulf Coast through the early part of next week. And of course, we'll keep everyone updated about it over the next few days. Central temperature is uh, currently looking like this. So the CET is currently standing at 16.5. That's an anomaly of just over half a degree above average added provisional to uh, yesterday, 24th of August. That's probably going to tick down slightly over the the, uh, over the end of the week and into the weekend. We are perhaps going to get some cooler nights coming along. Um, so I reckon the projection that we had from Simon a few days ago, 16.2, isn't going to be too far out whatsoever, really. These how the GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles are looking for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today, so red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off warmer than average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. Of course, we're bringing lots of crowd from off the North Sea, so that's pegging the temperatures back by by day, but does hold them up by night. Um, by the end of the week, we have a bit of a change. We've got cooler than average upper air temperatures uh, then. That will be offset by, by day with more sunshine, perhaps, uh, be relatively warm by day, but could be cooler uh, by night. Um, nothing particularly dramatic going on either way, but I'm just trying to find things to talk about, really. Um, as we go through into next week, it looks like you get a bit of a tick up in the upper air temperatures. Not particularly hot, but it does get a bit warmer, perhaps, with the upper air temperatures next week and then close to average as we move into the second week of se September. Very, very dry as well. That's the other uh, big talking point, I think, how dry it's going to be over the next week to 10 days. Um, so barely any measurable rain at all, really, up to around the 2nd of September. And then one or two of the ensemble members do produce some, uh, some precipitation into the second week of September. But even then, it looks really dry, actually, considering that's extended range and uh, reliable. And the GFS will always try to bring back Westerners um, in the end. Uh, you know, that's, that's very dry for, like, uh, week two. So it looks like some places are going to have a really, really dry uh, spell over the next uh, over the next couple of weeks. Won't necessarily say about a drought yet, but it does look as though it is going to be extremely dry uh, in some areas. Temperature anomaly shall be 25th of August, 2nd of September. Going to be warmer than average in the north, a little bit cooler than average down in the south. It's been the pattern of the summer, so it's only fitting that the summer, uh, meteorological summer anyway, is ending like this, I suppose, with uh, the north warmer than the south, which is highly unusual. 
um, but it does happen on occasion. And the precipitation anomaly, well, look at that. Very, very dry. Most places with 5% uh, or less of their average rainfall means that a lot of areas are going to have no measurable rainfall in the next week, from the 25th of August to the 2nd of September. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from EarthNorthSchool.net shows high pressure is in control of the weather, sitting over and slightly to the north of the country. That's where the warmest temperatures are, of course, under centre of the ridge. Around the high pressure, we're bringing the wind from the east and from the northeast. And so that's the reason southern areas are cooler and also bringing more cloud in from off the North Sea at times. Right at that point, we shall go uh, through the generic charts, shall we? So we're going to begin with the uh, UK Met. Now, if I get a pound for every time I say high pressure in the next five to ten minutes, I will be a very rich man. Everybody, uh, you know, count how many times I say high pressure. It's going to be a lot. This is how we look then uh, with the UK Met on Saturday. High pressure is over the top of the country and to our north. We are bringing a little bit of a northeast wind to the south, so it's a bit cooler, cloudier there. But basically, we're high and dry, uh, you know, as we begin the bank holiday weekend. And that high pressure is still there on Sunday. The high pressure is still dominating on bank holiday Monday as well. High pressure is still there on Tuesday and to midnight on Wednesday. No changes. That blocking area of high pressure remains centred over the top of the country at 1,030 millimars. Uh, this is how the GFS Midnight Run uh, was looking. So high pressure is dominating the weather over to the north of the country. High pressure is still there on Sunday and into Monday and Tuesday too. Still pulling in those northeast winds into the south and southeast. We'll bring a little bit more cloud uh, and, and cooler feel there. The warmest, sunniest weather will again be in the northwest. Absolutely classic spell of weather for the northern and northwestern part of the country. By the middle of next week, high pressure sits over the top of the country. It probably cuts off that northeast, northeasterly. So early September probably sees more sunshine in the south and southeast. Might be offset by cooler nights, though. Um, and, uh, and basically the high pressure still goes on, though. Uh, right, high pressure dominates up to day 10. Just weakening a little bit, perhaps, by day 10. Could allow one or two showers to, to break out in the southeast and across northern Scotland. Although, still, basically, we're under a ridge, really. Um, bit of a cooler northwesterly there on the 5th of September. Uh, and then the high pressure comes back in again. And we finish up right back where we started, uh, really, with high pressure... Uh, 1,030 millibars, slap bang, over top of country. So if I show you today's uh, chart, so this is today's chart. Uh, that's how it looks today. In like 15 days' time, uh, when we get to the 10th of September, <coughs> you know, nothing has really changed, to be honest. We're still right under that big ridge of high pressure. So this is a very, 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 very prolonged spell of high pressure domination that we're seeing here. Uh, which is something that can happen at this time uh, of the year, you know, late August, September, where the can really get itself stuck. And uh, and uh, it looks like that's the uh, sort of thing we've got coming up. This is how the 6Z is looking. Again, high pressure is in control of the weather on Saturday. The high pressure is still there on Sunday into Monday, through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, through Friday. <laughs> the high pressure is dominating the weather. That's to the 3rd of September. Round day 10, the high pressure just starts to weaken a little bit with some lower pressure beginning to come into northwest Scotland. So that does start to bring some rain into the north. The south is mostly dry, though, under that ridge. And this will really blow away the cobwebs. This is the 6th of September, beyond day 10. Probably won't verify. But um, this would blow away the cobwebs because this low pressure deepens in the uh, southern Norwegian Sea and pulls in uh, a much stronger and a lot colder, or cooler anyway, northwesterly to northerly wind. That probably will bring gale force winds to the north of Scotland. will probably bring rain as well, maybe even rain down into the far southern part of the country, but particularly so in the north. And, and that would be like quite a shock to the system after all of the, you know, uh, weeks of, uh, of static weather. It doesn't last so long. The high pressure then comes back in from off the Atlantic as we get through the second week of September. We are back under high pressure, albeit it looks like it's under threat of breaking there by the 10th of September. But of course, that is a very, very, very long way out. So the GM does liven things up a little bit beyond day 10, but up to day 10, uh, sorry, the GFS 6 ed does liven things up a little bit uh, after day 10, but up to day 10, the 6 ed 
is basically high pressure all the way. It's Albert G. Yeah, it's all you need if you enjoy the video. Please give me a smash like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody. Doing that, drop a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, so this is Albert G. Yeah, it's all in high pressure. Dominates the weather on Saturday. The high pressure still over top of the country. Sunday through to Monday, through to Tuesday, through to Wednesday, through to Thursday, through to Friday. And in Saturday, no changes. The high pressure is there. Maybe weakening slightly by day 10. But otherwise, uh, no changes whatsoever. Of course, if we'd have had this sort of pattern set up like four, six weeks ago, this would have been a real heat wave we'd have been uh, looking at. But uh, we're end of summer uh, now, and so there is not as much potential within the atmosphere to, to get things uh, excessively hot. Uh, so this how the ECM is looking. Oh, conversely, because this is, was mid-winter, man, we would be looking at a spell of uh, really cold weather, certainly frosty and foggy weather uh, anyway, if not necessarily overly snowy. Um, this is how the ECM is looking. I'm going to try and find things to talk about in the videos over the next few days. It's going to be a stretch, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, this is how the ECM is looking again. High pressure just in control. On Saturday, the high pressure will be dominating the weather through the back holiday weekend, a little bit of a northeasterly wind. If that was winter, that would bring in snow showers, I suppose, to the southeast, that northeasterly wind. Um, it's not, though. It's only the end of August, so it'll only bring cloud with it. Maybe a few spots of drizzle on the east coast. But uh, anyway, cooler and uh, cooler and cloudier for the southeast, probably uh, on back holiday Monday. But the warmest, driest weather will be in the north, where I know it's not a bank holiday. Scotland, but you'll still get a very nice day uh, anyway. And then through next week, high pressure dominating the weather again, keeps it keeps us dry right the way up to day 10 under that large area of high pressure. I wonder how many times that is I've said high pressure on this update. Now, these are the uh, this is the precipitation forecast based on that uh, ECM run from Tometio.com. I did debate whether to bother showing this, but I thought, why not? Because we always do. But obviously, with all of that high pressure going on, there isn't going to be much precipitation to talk about. So I'm just rattling through, and you'll notice there's not much happening. So I think we'll uh, move on from that quite quickly. These are the options are on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 via the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, so this is going to get us to the 4th of September. 13 members of the ECM ensembles will have high pressure over to the west of the country um, and uh, bring in the wind from the northwest. That's mainly dry, but it's a little bit cool. Uh, 13 with high pressure over and slightly to the west of the country. That's more easterly uh, with the flow. And, of course, that's going to be a warmer wind direction in September. Easterly, especially early on in September, will be quite warm but could bring some cloud into the south and southeast. 11, including the control and the operation run. High pressure again, more or less over top of the country. does reach a little bit towards the northwest. Uh, another 11, again, high pressure over top of the country. Three, just doing something different. They have a mid-Atlantic ridge up to Greenland. Trough of low pressure over Scandinavia. Uh, winds in from a uh, northerly direction. So that is clearly the coolest option. And probably the most unsettled as well. Certainly showery. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 9th of September. 14 members of the ECL ensembles will have high pressure over top of the country. So no changes uh, with that one. Uh, 13 uh, do, does have low pressure to the north of Scotland. So that's a little bit different. That brings some showers or long as well as the rain. Especially so to the north. Uh, nine, again, high pressure is over the top of the country. Uh, eight, with high pressure ridging in from the uh, Azores, Scandinavia. Very slow pressure over Greenland, so it's putting that ridge under some pressure. Um, but, but really high pressure dominates, uh, you know, with that. And then seven, again, with Middle Atlantic Ridge up to Greenland. Travel low pressure over Scandinavia, winds in from the north. So that is going to be, again, the coolest uh, option. This one is probably the most unsettled option, the 13 there. That will bring quite wet weather to the north. But this one, 7 here, is, is the coolest option. So certainly, uh, you know, up to day 10, it looks like high pressure domination will go on. Uh, between days 10 and 14, as we get to like two weeks out, we might see a change to lower pressure and weaken that ridge up. But of course, it's all very, a very, very, very long way out and you wouldn't want to be betting you say you won't want to be betting the house on it i don't think but we'll see the high pressure breaking in the second week of september but we'll see 
Uh, CFS B2 finally beats the 500 millibar heights, breaking down into weak beers. But first, weak beer will take us from the 25th to the 31st of August. The coming week has high pressure over country and brings in winds from the east. Mostly dry and settled uh, with that. Week 2 is going to be the 1st through to the 7th of September with high pressure over and sorry to the west of the country this time. Still mainly dry and settled. The only difference is that we change wind direction to a rather cooler sort of northwesterly, northerly. But it's still mostly dry. Big change for week three. This would liven things up. This would be 8th to the 14th of September. The high pressure pulls into the middle of the Atlantic. And this trough of low pressure develops across northern and western Europe. It would be cool that, bringing in the wind from the north. And with low pressure in the north and west of Europe, it would be unsettled too with showers or longer spells of rain and then week four is going to be the 15th to 21st of september uh low pressure then around iceland and greenland high pressure in the central of the center of the atlantic so we're reverting to a westerly there um and that would be quite unsettled particularly for northern parts of the country so the CFS is still um, going with the idea, but it gets more unsettled as we go further on into September. You have to say that there's very little sign of that uh, within, like, the GFS, the ECM, the GEM. They are just high, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure all the way um, for, for days on end. But we shall see. At some point, it'll break. So it's going to be a question of how the models, you know, handle the breakdown when it eventually comes along. Right, so that's it for the video. If you enjoyed today's video, please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Uh, you'll be able to see future weather content if you do give us a sub. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Um, so, uh, you know, if everybody who subscribes means a friend, we're going to get to our target of 12k subscribers so much quick, so much more quickly. And uh, drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Uh, we've got to put on now around, I think it's around um, seven, 65 to 70 subscribers. Uh, I haven't looked at the count today, but uh, I, think it, I think we're under 70 now we have to put on. So uh, please give us a sub, uh, and that just gets to 11.9k. Please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And, and yeah, uh, it's absolutely amazing and fantastic. Well, that's it for today's uh, videos. Tomorrow, we're going to start off with our 7 a.m. broadcast. We'll have the uh, we'll have the European Outlook as well for you tomorrow. Probably a final update from Bank Holiday Weekend, because why not? And, uh, and a 10 to 14 day uh, as well. You enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And for this video, uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.